Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. New Yorkers have one of the country's strongest organizations to defend our civil liberties and civil rights. It's called the New York Civil Liberties Union, and it is the ACLU of New York State. Donna Lieberman is the executive director and my guest today. Welcome. Thank you, Ronnie. I mean, this is what interests me. I've been thinking about this. I know it's most likely a silly question. Rand and Ron Paul are libertarians. Does that make them civil libertarians? And there is a difference, isn't there, if they are civil libertarians, between their kind and your kind? Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, that's actually kind of a cool question because um, there are areas of agreement between the libertarians and the civil libertarians. Yeah. Um, you know, it has a lot to do with government surveillance um, and, and, and the individual's right to be left alone. Uh, but, but uh, you know, many libertarians, sadly, uh, forget about that principle when it comes to, oh, say, government involvement in a woman's right to choose, for example. Um, and, you know, when it comes to social justice issues, um, uh, it's not an area of a lot of uh, <laughs> common values. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, one of the things that the ACLU um, is really committed to doing is um, uh, making common cause with individuals who agree with us on those issues where we agree, and we can agree to disagree on the other issues. So in the post 9-11 uh, era, for example, we were working with people like Bob Barr on right, some of our right. efforts around, to resist the excesses of government surveillance with regard to the Patriot Act. So that wasn't a silly question, Ronnie. All right, <laughs> but also would the libertarians be um, slower to suggest any kind of legislative solution to ensure that you have the civil liberties. Absolutely. I, I mean, I think that, right? that, oh, absolutely. They're more passive. You know, passive is one way to put it. Yeah. You know, they believe, I think it's, I, I don't want to speak for the libertarians. Right. No, and um, I don't but, want but, but the notion of, you know, government, you know, sort of uh, uh, doing things to, to protect individual rights um, is something that, that really, you know, um, it's hard for them, I think, to come around to. And um, uh, so we don't, you know, we work together when we can, and, and we're um, uh, in opposition when uh, the issues call for it. So uh, Tuesday was the day for women's equality in Albany. Yes. Every day should be the day for women's exactly. equality in Albany. <laughs> Explain what's happening, because it's, it's garnering a lot of attention. Yeah, well, you know, um, Governor Cuomo, uh, to his credit, has made women's equality um, a centerpiece of his agenda this legislative session. And it's wonderful and exciting, and it's going to give uh, uh, the every member of the state legislature the opportunity to stand up for women. You know, New York is known as a as a state that that believes in equality, uh, yeah, right. believes in the right to choose. Um, but as it turns out, our laws um, have some gaps in them and need a bit of updating. And so the women's equality agenda is a ten point agenda to really plug the loopholes and, and put New York further on the road to, uh, to equality. So it may be areas where we think we've already progressed, but we need to go back and strengthen the, the uh, what? The Is existing laws, yeah, yeah, yeah. like in reproductive and the, rights. And enforcement also? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, there's, uh, everybody knows that pregnancy discrimination is against the law, but what people don't know mm -hmm. is that an employer's obligation to make a reasonable accommodation for pregnant workers is not as clearly enshrined in the law, and so that instead of employers being on notice that they have to make reasonable accommodation, you know, like an extra five-minute break to go to the bathroom for it, you know, or if there's light duty around, mm -hmm. you know, an accommodation to, to not topple the whole system, but, but to, to, to allow women, you know, access yep, to light duty yep. positions when they're pregnant. You know, it, that's like, it, so 
enshrining in the law, making it clear that employers have an obligation to make reasonable accommodations is, is, is in some ways a small fix, but it would be huge. And so explain, what happens when an employer doesn't do that? What does the woman do? Or what well, will she do? Well, what happens is she has to file a lawsuit. And, and you know, some people think everybody goes to court you know, in a whim. That doesn't happen. It takes an enormous amount of, of courage and, and resources and to file yeah. a, a lawsuit. The NYCLU has been called on time and again to represent pregnant employees. You know, we had a, a, a well-known case in Suffolk County where they wouldn't give light duty to pregnant employees, but they would give light duty to guys who had heart attacks and were coming back to work. And they told them, you have to either be, you know, on the beat you know, without a bulletproof vest because we don't make them to fit you. You know, we don't have them over your kind of pot belly, I guess. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, we had, to, we had several years of litigation. It was a drain on our resources. It was a drain on their resources. We so had a full-blown trial, and we finally won. So now but we shouldn't have, have to so go to what, court So what's the improvement going to be? Well, th there's, it's going to be clear in the law that, that, that an employer is required uh, to provide uh, reasonable accommodations to, to pregnant employees. And that's just one example yeah. of what the And also, agenda. is there going to be uh, something to do with attorney's fees? Yeah, well, well, you know, um, uh, the law about discrimination in the workplace is clear, yeah. but, but often women can't get lawyers to represent them because the amount of money, for, particularly for low-income workers, yeah. um, is not that great. And the availability. And, of and lawyers can't afford to do this for free. So this would make it possible only when you win to c collect attorney's fees. So that's a really yeah. important piece of it. And of course another piece which um, people don't really um, uh, understand is a problem in New York is that while our law about a woman's right to choose um, uh, is was way ahead of its time, 1970, I, we passed the law. Right. Were you involved in that? I was. I was there. Oh, it was Ronnie. the most exciting thing. Right. Well, yeah. you're a shero. <laughs> 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 and, 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 but the law doesn't quite match up to Roe v. Wade. Yeah. And so another provision would, would align New York's law with Roe v. Wade to make it clear that a physician has the authority and a woman has the right to get the medical care she needs whenever it's necessary to protect both her health and her life at any point in pregnancy. Is that improvement unique to New York? It's an improvement that we need because even though Roe v. Wade says that has to be the law, the way our law is written now, people don't know it. And when people don't know it, there are people who fall through the cracks. There are hospitals that are afraid to do the right thing. There are doctors who don't know that they can do the right thing or are afraid to do the right thing. We want it to be clear that women's health and lives are paramount. But it, the effort is unique, isn't it, in state government? Because it seems to me most state governments are looking how to limit it. Well, that's one of the reasons it's why great. it's so important. It's because because New yeah. York has the opportunity to stand up for women, and 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 it would be what a beacon of hope compared to what's going on elsewhere Absolutely. in the country. Absolutely. And by the way, Positive. you know, you know, people talk about the reproductive rights piece is like the most controversial. You know, that's a lot of baloney. Yeah. You know, eighty percent of New Yorkers across. All political parties, gender, geography support this. And so hopefully, you know, in the next couple of weeks, you know, we had thousands of women in Albany mm -hmm. this week, but, but hopefully in the, in the next couple of weeks it will continue and the legislature will do the right thing and stand for women. It's very cool. We have these T-shirts. Yeah, I was going to say, I love, you know, Rosie the Riveter. That was a moment of such... Power, isn't that great? Yeah, and that's what. How many organizations are part of this coalition? Oh, just 800 or so. I mean, in the space <laughs> of in the space of of uh, a few months, you know. 800 organizations signed on to the women's that's equality incredible. agenda and w organizations of all shades. We have um, uh, chambers of commerce and business leaders. We have, you know, the usual suspects, the NYCLU, <laughs> ACLU, Planned Parenthood, NARAL, mm -hmm. uh, now, you know, family yeah. planning advocates. Um, labor is all in this, you know, the so state great. AFL, the teachers. It's fabulous. So once this kicks off, people, but we're near a legis the end of the legislative session. That's so right. are these in bill form now? So. Well, um, uh, they're just, they've just come <laughs> out in bill form and, and um, you so know, we need to they're blitz. A, right, and, 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 <laughs> and we're blitzing, you know, there's, um, uh, people can follow us on Twitter at 
mm -hmm. NY for Women uh, or um, uh, NY uh, Women's Equality on, on at www.nywomensequality or nyclu.org. There are all the links mm -hmm. there. Um, and there's so much for people to do uh, to get the grassroots movement uh, uh, going uh, and to, so, that, so that the legislature, the legislature understands this is where women are at, it's where yeah. men are at, it's the right thing, it's time to stand up for women. And next year they get, they're up for re-election, so it helps. This will help them. Yes. They may not realize it, but it will help them, and they're going to hear from people. Right. So this organization is good, very good. Yeah. So let's now talk about the police. Oh. <laughs> you know, I always feel bad because when there's a problem and a cop comes to the house or helps you on the street, it's, it's a blessing, right? They seem to know what to do, how to do. They have this f figure of authority. And then we have so many problems. How do we balance it out? Well, you know, I think you make a really important point. We all count on the police and the NYPD in particular to take care of us yeah. uh, when we need them. And, and for the most part, they do. And they, do, they have a tough job. They do a great job for the they most do. part. You know, but there are problems, and, and I think it's easier for, for people like you and me, who are white, um, uh, to feel really, really unabashedly good about the police because they don't have to experience firsthand um, the racial profiling that, while it may not be intentional, it's happening. Um, and, and, you know, what I'm talking about is the stop and frisk program that, that is so out of control and so not what it's supposed to be in terms of um, a, a vehicle to, for the police to interact with suspicious uh, people. For, in other words, people mm -hmm. who not by virtue of the color of their skin or the mm -hmm. clothes they're wearing, but by virtue of their behavior are acting in a way that r raises suspicion of criminal wrongdoing. And so there's the trial in, in, in federal court now, uh, which includes the, C the Center for Constitutional Rights uh, lawsuit and the NYCLU lawsuit about aspects of stop and frisk. And um, we're waiting for a verdict on that. Yeah, right? we're waiting for a verdict. And, 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 um, and there's a bigger verdict out there, which is the mayoral election. This is an issue that New Yorkers are raising in the mayoral debates and that every mayoral candidate has to really um, come clean on, you know, be, be thoughtful about how are you going to exercise the responsibilities of policing and protecting New Yorkers and doing it not just by enforcing the, not just by, by in a way that is consistent with the right. law. Police are not above the law, and the goal of keeping New Yorkers safe is huge, but you can't do it if you ignore, disdain, and disrespect the fundamental human right so to be left alone, basically. The purpose of stop and frisk was to get guns off the street? Well, that's the, that, that was the ostensible know. purpose, right. and, and, and maybe that's what they really think it's accomplishing. There's no way that it's doing that. You know, the hit rate, the, the, the rate at which guns are recovered uh, pursuant to stop and frisk is, is so minuscule. It's like 0.15%, yeah. you know, like one in 790 something. Yeah, so they never, yeah. And, and, and so, but what they do do, you know, mo a huge chunk of stop and frisk is about suspicion of marijuana, yeah. you know, and, 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 um, well, that's, you know, it's not worth it, is it? <laughs> it sure isn't worth it. There's no correlation between yes. marijuana and violence. Let's, let's talk about racial profiling yeah. because it's very complicated, it isn't sure it? Is. How do you, um, I mean, how do you take crime statistics from a community and say, well, it's a high crime community. And then you look at the ethnic or whatever, however we describe that community. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that it's not usually a white community. Mm -hmm. Now what do you do? Well, you know, I think that, that, that you know, it, it's really important to sort of like be clear about like what we believe in terms of like where the police should be. Of course we want police to be on the street in communities where there is high crime. Absolutely. But what they're doing with stop and frisk is turning everybody in the community, 
Into the criminal. Into a suspect. A suspect. Right. So, so stop and frisk isn't about going after criminals or suspected criminals. It's about almost 90% of the time going after people who are so innocent that in an era where you get a summons for riding your bike on the sidewalk or an open container or disorderly conduct, right, at the drop of a hat, right, almost 90% of the people walk away without even a summons. So this isn't about right. going after suspected criminals, right. even suspected low-level criminals. It's about going after a community, and that's what's wrong with it. Um, and, 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 and I wish, I wish, I wish that, that Commissioner Kelly and the mayor would, would understand that, that, that it really takes a toll on people. It takes a toll on teenage kids, black young men who are growing up, you know, having to worry about, you know, being thrown up against the wall or down on the ground and by mothers. a cop for doing nothing wrong. wrong. Moms, I mean, oh my, it's, it's a so mother's nightmare. It's so great to nightmare. have your kid go out on the street. Absolutely, absolutely. There was a coach in Brooklyn <laughs> who, who insisted that all his players, right, all his football players wear their helmets and uniforms home so that the cops would know that they were the good kids. Isn't that something? What a sad comment. Now let's take that and follow it because you guys have done a lot of work about police and schools. Yeah. And so the same kids that are stopped on the street and the same parents that have their kids with this oppressive feeling all the time, they go to school and it's very oppressive. I walked into a school to visit and I'm immediately, my back is up. I don't want to, you know, I don't. So let's talk about that. Yeah, you know, um, the, the, we have a situation in the New York City schools that under our education mayor, you know, we have over 5,000 school safety officers and about 3,000 guidance counselors. That speaks volumes. And it's the-, the, 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 the Say it again. 5,000 school safety officers, 3,000 guidance counselors. You know, I mean, That's the priorities are totally um, upside down. And, and what you have is instead of um, kids being disciplined by teachers who understand how adolescents think, how they develop, you have school safety officers who may mean well, but who are told to butt into these situations. And sometimes educators call them in and they kind of abdicate their responsibilities. What's the training you know, for it? School well, safety. Um, they get a little bit of training. They're, you know, they're several, hired by the D Department of Education. They are, they are entirely under the supervision of the police department. And they're not required to listen to the principal. So we've had situations where principals get arrested for, for trying to protect their to kids from school safety officers out of control. Kids get arrested for writing on the desk, and kids get arrested for sassing, and they get arrested for doing stupid teenage things. But they shouldn't be arrested for that. They should be disciplined. They should, it, it should be seen as a teachable moment. You know, I'm so gratified that, that um, Judge Kay um, has, has recently issued a report um, with a whole uh, committee on juvenile um, uh, justice, you know, really identifying this problem and looking to to engage people all over, you know, all the stakeholders in coming up with a solution. And this is another issue, you know, um, uh, where, where the mayoral election that, that is, is, is mm -hmm. coming up has to be a moment where every, every, we have mayoral control of the schools, thank you very much, but what are you going to do to make sure that our kids have a safe the, learning environment to go to school in? Do the school safety offices, are they also in the charter schools? Uh, who knows? <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the the lion's share of school safety officers are in are in junior high and high schools, and they are in in um, uh, impact schools, which are overwhelming overwhelmingly schools with um, the, large numbers of kids of color. They're the kids who didn't who haven't gotten into or 
didn't apply to other specialized schools or small schools. Yeah, and there, there are... Are they there, in Stuyvesant and, and in Bronx Science also? Co- there are yeah, some, some, but not a lot. And there have been some incidents, haven't they? There have been incidents. Yeah, and there have been incidents, um, you know, but there are schools where the school safety officers are a dream and a phenomenal part of a fabulous school environment. Julia Richmond Education Complex, which 15 years ago was like a disaster. If, every, and, if all the schools were like that complex, then we would have no problems, would we? Uh, we would probably still have little <laughs> problems, but, but we would have a way to solve them. And, yeah. and that's the amazing thing. I mean, I would, I would model, you know, what happens at, at Julia Richmond, you know, in, in as many schools as possible awesome. yeah. um, on, on every level. It's not just about discipline. It's about the whole learning environment so, where kids are really in So are you in court about this or where, what, what? Yeah. So yeah. what, what is that called and what, where We is have that? a lawsuit BH against the NYPD and um, uh, it's... It, it, How many lawsuits do you have against the <laughs> we, NYPD? <laughs> we have too many lawsuits. Yeah. You know, we would love Not to them the to... Lawsuits. We would love them to come to the table and talk to us about solutions to these problems. Right. And it's been, it's been really a challenge to get them to talk to us. We're a lot more reasonable than, 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 than they let on. And um, How there's, large is their legal department? Oh, gosh, that's a question they have to answer. They we forgot to, to tell that up me. in the budget. Yeah, yeah really. It's it's, I'm sure it's in the budget, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but they spend an awful lot of time playing defense and dishing on us um, instead of, like, really figuring out with us, you know, and with the teachers and with the principals and with the parents, you know, what are the solutions? And what are, where is it that it works well? And how can we, how can we model that? Um, so there's a lot of work to do, and a new administration is going to mean a new day in education. And I just hope that 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 we're able to to um, ensure that all the candidates, you know, before they um, get into to, to Gracie Mansion, if they should move there, um, uh, that whoever does really understands that that we've got a problem with regard to school discipline. Do you discipline. have a forum or some? kind of way of communicating with all these candidates about what your positions and what you would like to see done. Well, we work with a lot of organizations and and there have been educational forums yeah. and we have we are, we are reaching out to all the candidates um, to let them know that we want to talk to them. Um, and we're happy to sit down with them one on one, you know, four, five, six on six, uh, or six on two, uh, to, 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 to talk these issues yeah. through. They're difficult issues and and um, um, but they're kind of at the core of what local government's supposed Let's to do, do education and, and policing, yeah. you know? What other issues are you high on your agenda? Well, we have a, a huge statewide um, uh, class action going now about the right to counsel. Um, you know, we have legal aid here in New York. And, is that but Gideon? Is that? It, this is Gideon. You yeah. know, we're fighting for, for Gideon uh, the right to counsel when you can't afford a lawyer and you're charged with a crime statewide. The statewide system is, is criminal. criminal. Uh, the statewide system is really um, um, a mess and it fails to provide for a lawyer at arraignment. It fails to provide that, that, that cases can be investigated, that there are translators, that there's even uh, uh, criteria for eligibility. And so there's a lot of work to do, you know, on a personal level. You know, I started my legal career at Legal Aid in the South Bronx in, in the early 70s, and, and that's what we were fighting for with the Lawyers Union, mm -hmm. and it's still an issue in New York State. So we have a class action going on that, and um, we're hoping... Um, Who joins you in that? Is, is Legal Aid a part of that? Uh, they're not a part of it, but we talk to them. It's, but it's all their the money. Time. I mean, isn't it all these allocations that defenders well, associ all? We we talk to the state defenders association. Yeah. We talk to right. various. We talk to everybody who, who who's got a stake in this um, about what we're doing, and we try to sort of you know make sure that all right. the concerns and expertise is reflected in how we litigate the case. And of course, the other another issue um, that I'm really excited yeah. about. <laughs> do I talk immigration or do I talk about DOMA? You know, we filed. We were co counsel in the Edie Windsor case oh, um, that's going to be decided yeah. by the Supreme Court any minute. And that case Does that mean will, you go to the Supreme Court? 
Well, we were part of the, yeah. the, the, the team right. that went to the Supreme Court. Well, I was there at the argument. Yeah. And, and we're hoping that we can get the, a decision from the court in the next couple of weeks striking down DOMA once and for all, which would mean that, that yes, we've legalized you know, marriage Edge between same-sex couples here, but it's not as, as, as Ruth Ginsburg said, you know, but that's kind of like skim milk marriage. You know, it's not the full thing because federal law doesn't recognize it. And, 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 and so winning this lawsuit will be a huge uh, step forward for, for equality and human rights. And what do you think is going to happen? I think we're going to win. <laughs> okay, I've said it in public, and, and I sure hope we do. And we, we'll get so that verdict important. before July, or whenever yes, before it adjourns. It, yes, isn't yes. that exciting? It's so exciting, yeah. and 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 to see the the glow in Edie Windsor's face every uh, time she gets up um, uh, in this case is yeah. just a thrill. It's it's been a long time coming, and I hope that we have a victory to celebrate. At our concert, Broadway Stands Up for Freedom, which is July 22nd, and there's information online. So you about are that. so busy. I am so busy. And 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 the union and uh, NICLU has expanded over the years. I mean, you're now involved in so many things. How do you get funded? Well, we we one way we don't get funded is through the government. We don't accept government money. We we count on people to join the NYCLU, which is doable online at nyclu.org. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> and and, and uh, we count on, on, on people to make contributions. They can make tax deductible or non-tax deductible contributions to us also online. Um, and, you know, we get some foundation grants. Um, and you have affiliates around the state. I mean, you have offices around the state. We have offices in every major um, uh, city around the state. We have uh, uh, eight offices around the state including a legislative office in Albany. So you have a constant legislative presence. Yes, we have a constant legislative presence. And we are so busy. There are so many issues. We've just barely scratched the surface. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. And people should really go to the website, see what you're doing, read more about these cases, and also contribute. It would be great, right? Yeah, and we also have an opportunity for people to do like the, the easy way to support our work, which is sign up to become an e-activist at nyclu.org. You know, we send out emails and alerts, and we give people an opportunity to contact their legislators about the issues of the day. One issue we didn't talk about is immigration, but we're all in immigration yeah, reform. We'll do that, yeah. And we'll do that another time. <laughs> and, and um, it's especially important because with women's equality and the, the end of the session coming up, this is the time to move and get these things passed and enforced, right? Absolutely. Now's the time. Thank you, Donna Lieberman. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ronnie. If there are any people you'd like to hear and topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.